The following story is something I never, really, talk about. Something that I hate bringing up constantly. But I feel like I need to get it off my chest. It happened around two spring breaks ago. But it continues to traumatize me to this day. I'm an Instagram model. And an aspiring supermodel from Glendale, California. A city in the greater LA area. My modeling career was starting to really take off. I was getting some clothing brand deals and was starting to get our higher amount of followers. I eventually expanded my income sources from just Instagram modeling to other things. One of them was OnlyFans. I started an OnlyFans account where my followers and fans can pay to see more exclusive photos of me. And that seemed to be going great. I never got any requests from any creeps. And people were overall accepting of my decision. I eventually started gaining a lot of friends from both the online modeling and the OnlyFans community. I even started collaborating with other online models and influencers. I ended up meeting a girl named Megan through other Instagram and OnlyFans connections. Megan was actually newer to this whole gig than me, but was gaining traction even quicker. Things were going really good for her, and we eventually met in person at an event. She seemed really chill, and soon her friendship was born. It would do various collaborations on OnlyFans and Instagram, and would eventually even just hang out for the fun of it. One night, however, I was scrolling through my emails and got a text message from Megan. Apparently a really famous online influencing team is interested in both Megan and I sure. I'd been scouted before, but never from an organization this large. Apparently, an agent from the modeling group reset to Megan. After seeing a photo of her and I on Instagram, they said they'd like to collaborate with us on Instagram, giving us a large sum of money and free promotion of her OnlyFans in return. It seemed great, but almost too good to be true. I want to confirm myself that this was a legitimate agent, not some sort of troll or scam. When I checked the supposed agent's profile, everything seemed to check out. He had a lot of followers, real posts and a professional page. His email had a proper domain on it too. This was really happening. Megan and I immediately asked the agent for more details and explained to us how it worked. They were based in San Diego, about two hours away from us in La. They wanted to do a quick photo shoot with both of us in it and discuss future opportunities. While we were there, they claimed, they had booked out a hotel room in the south of San Diego, and they do the shoot at a local beach. It seemed legit. So we set up a time and booked a bus over there. I was excited, but not as much as Megan. Though, Megan was thrilled for the whole idea. She had only been at this for about a year now. She was working with the big companies already. It was like a dream come true for her. We eventually arrived at the hotel. And while it wasn't a five-star resort, it was decent. You were greeted by an unusually casually dressed man at the front door. Megan and Lisa, right? He asked us, the grin on his face. Yes. That's us, replied Megan jubiliantly. All right, follow me. We got a room booked for you guys, upstairs. The man guided us to our hotel room and we unpacked. Megan was still ecstatic. Can you believe this is happening? She asked. I was happy too, but I kept doubting her decision. The man who escorted us to our room didn't seem very professional. But hell, he could just be having a long day. 
Eventually we got a knock on the door. It was the man from before. He said he'd take us to the venue once we were ready. And we were. He picked us up in a rather nice car. But something didn't add up. He claimed it was the company car. But it clearly had a local rental sticker on the license plate. I again shrugged it off and got in the car. Throughout the car ride, he kept eyeing us from the rearview mirror. He asked us a few basic questions, like how was our flight and where we were from. He really wasn't that inviting, especially for a brand ambassador. I started wondering again, whether or not this was a bad idea, and whether I should ruin Megan's mood and let her know of my concerns. But my thought was interrupted by the car coming to a halt. We had arrived. It was a small and secluded beach area and honestly, it was beautiful. We were going to be doing our shoot on a boat, which is parked at the shore, and we would be traveling to a small, nearby island with another beach on it. On the boat was about four to six men, middle-aged and seemingly they were the camera crew. The boat was actually quite large. It was no yacht, but it did have an upper deck and a lower floor. The whole setup was a bit unusual, especially for a company of this size. I didn't see much equipment or a supervisor at all. No director. No makeup artists, just the men. Before we all got on, they searched through our handbags and said they'd hold on to them for the ride. This was really starting to alarm me. But the boat started moving and we were on our way. While making one up the deck and enjoy the breeze, I went to the lower compartment of the boat and used a very small bathroom in it. As I was washing my hands, I couldn't help but think of how odd this whole gig was. I didn't see a single camera in sight. And the men on board seemed to be trying to pass as much time as possible. That's when I saw a shadow in the door. Underneath it was a pair of feet. Someone was watching me. I quickly thought about what to do. Why was this man just standing there? Was he waiting to use the bathroom too? Did he just happen to be waiting by the door? While I was there, next thing I noticed, there was two pairs of feet under the door, side by side. I knew that they were ganging up on me. At this point, I mustered every last bit of courage in me and barged open the door, knocking both of them over. While they were down and in pain, I quickly thought of what to do next. But that's when it hit me. Megan was still at the top deck. I then heard violent trashing, followed by Megan's muffled screams. I quickly ran up the stairs, only to be tripped over by one of the men. I grabbed a water bottle from nearby and threw it at his head. That seemed to keep him off me for a bit. But as I got on my feet and tried to run towards the room where Megan's screams were coming from, he tried to headlock me from behind. I violently trashed around and bit down on his hand. As hard as I could, he yelled in pain and threw me off to the side. I tripped over the side railing and landed in the water. Still hearing, making screams all muffled up. I tried to swim back to the boat. But it was useless. I somehow managed to float back ashore and was taken in by a local lifeguard crew. They took me into the emergency room where they tended to my fight wounds and I explained to them and the police everything that happened. The boat, the hotel, the rental car, the sketchy men. They managed to make one or two arrests in San Diego. But the men who took Megan were never found. The police believed that they had crossed into Tijuana and were somewhere off in Mexico. 
They even tried getting Mexican law enforcement in it, too, but they couldn't find anything either. Not even the hotel and car rental company had any answers. I was shattered. I lost my best friend. Solely due to the fact that I didn't want to speak up on my suspicions. When I asked the modeling agency how they could just let this happen and how they could hire people like this, they promptly replied to me, stating that they never hired a man of this name. The account, the followers, the photos, the email, all of them were fake, turns out. The entire thing was some sort of lure for a human trafficking ring. And Megan and I were the victims. To this day, I still don't know where Megan is. This incident has left me traumatized and left my career changed permanently. The story I'm about to tell you is something that I'm still in disbelief of today. Crazy things happen all the time, but even with that in mind, the situation I was knee deep in was honestly unfathomable. I struggle to even listen to the words, only fans without shuddering today. This happened when I was in college, so really not that long ago. I was an engineering student. And I would often find myself in the library, either doing work or catching up with other students. In my college, the library was an interesting place. It seemed to attract a lot of different students from all over campus, all with their own unique tastes and experiences. The people and their thinking processes were very diverse. This meant that I'd end up meeting people with a widely different series of interests in me. One of them was a beautiful young woman named Rose. We initially struck a conversation over something casual, like our shoes or the weather, but soon consider ourselves decent friends. We eventually added each other on social media, and that's when I noticed it in her Instagram bio. She had an OnlyFans now. I personally didn't care that much. It's honestly something that we're starting to see more and more in our day and age. But I eventually realized that Rose's only fans was actually quite the topic on campus. Most people I'd met seemed to have some opinion or another about Rose's only fans. The opinion seemed to be split into different ways. One being impressed with her confidence in the fact that she's open about having an OnlyFans and the other half being critical of her feeling like she has no respect for herself and feeling that she'd do anything for money now i personally didn't care that much but one night rose seemed to be doing some sort of promotion on her only fans and my curiosity spiked she was giving out a month of free content and seemingly trying to gain a bigger audience. I was signing up for an OnlyFans, wasn't exactly on my list of plans for that night, but she was giving it out for free, and I figured I should check it out. After all, the whole school was talking about it, so I used a spare email of mine and signed up. It wasn't anything out of the ordinary, to be honest with you, nothing unexpected. Sure, it was somewhat awkward seeing Rose and photos like that, but hey, what was I expecting? I took a look at her subscriber count, and she seemed to have quite a lot of them. I could imagine that she's making quite a lot of money with this. A week or two passed by, and I honestly forgot that I even signed up for an account. It was interesting in all seeing Rose's only fans but I honestly had better things to do. But eventually one of my college friends told me that something happened, he told me frantically, to check her OnlyFans in social media. I opened my OnlyFans inside. She had been kidnapped on her OnlyFans and Twitter. 
with a photo banner with text in it. It stated that she'd been kidnapped, and the kidnappers were looking for a lot of ransom. It mentioned that we had a few days to get the money in. Otherwise, they'd harm her or kill her. They also included the detail that she's being kept at a secret location so that they make sure that we wouldn't find her. This had to be some sort of joke, right? Immediately, message her various times on every single platform. No response, I asked around. Other people, as to what they got from her. They got no response either. All of us were in a panic state. We had no idea what was happening or what to do. Was Rose playing some sort of sick joke? Was she okay? That's what it hit us. Rose hadn't been seen all that past week. At that point, we knew that something might have actually happened. No one, not even her close friends, had a clue where she could be. We waited for another day, wondering when she dropped this sick sort of joke. But that never happened. We started looking for her. Everyone on campus looked up and down the place for her, but there was no sign. Whether it was her usual hangout spot or less known places, there was absolutely no trace of her. Every square inch of the university. We then asked her professors and they said the same thing. Her attendance report revealed that she had been absent the whole week. Things just kept getting weirder and weirder. Some of her close friends even contacted her family, asking where she was. But none of them knew where she was either. We were really starting to get worried at this point. But we didn't want to start paying the ransom just yet. After all, the kidnappers could just keep increasing the price. Several reports were signed to the university. And eventually, a missing person case was submitted to the police. It started off with campus security, looking around and scanning for where she could be, but evolved to a full-on police warrant. And search investigation even. The cops were a bit stumped with the whole situation. They'd obviously seen kidnappings before, but asking for a ransom on an online platform. That wasn't exactly heard of. The police looked around the university themselves, but there were still no sign of her. Eventually, a warrant for the search of Rose's home was finally approved, and we all looked inside her door. The apartment seemed completely normal, but her essential items, such as her pillows and laptop, were all gone. From this, we concluded that she might have been kidnapped while she was leaving and going somewhere. The police took a look at the security footage and noticed that her car seemed to have left the parking lot the supposed day of the kidnapping. The investigation was just getting weirder and weirder. All of us were extremely worried. We knew that someone or the other would have the motivation to kidnap Rose. After all, she was a wealthy, famous and attractive young woman. She interact with people online run a daily basis. There had to be some sort of creeper. Psycho wanted to harm her. People that already started submitting small amounts towards a ransom. They just didn't want to take that risk of leaving. It be a day later. And it was trending all over social media. Hashtag save Rose. The story even hit county news. Everyone in a 20-mile radius started talking about this. And eventually the police started to work. Over time, they felt. With the amount of publicity this case was getting, it really wouldn't look good on their part. If they didn't find her. Eventually the state troopers got involved too. And they started looking for her as well. The search continued, and with it our worries. Eventually, the ransom was paid off. So many people had pitched in. Small amounts of the money. Goal was hit. 
Was she free? Will the kidnappers just keep raising the ransom price? A few hours went by, but there were still no answer from Rose. We were at the peak of our fear. Normally something would happen by now, right? But no. None of us got an answer, but that next day. Everything was answered. A highway patrol officer spotted the vehicle. That was registered to Rose. It also was reported missing at the time. He immediately turned on his lights and pulled a car over. That was it, the moment of truth. As he got up to the car door, the officer spotted Rose. He immediately took her out of the car and inspected it thoroughly. But she was the only one in it. The news hit us that Rose had been found and she was taken back to the police station for questioning. All of us were relieved. We didn't understand the mysterious nature for kidnapping but at this point, we were just glad that she was okay and back. But once again, things just kept getting stranger and stranger. Rose did not have a single scratch on her. The paramedics and investigators found no sign of any physical or mental trauma kidnapping victims would normally have. Either one of these Rose was being rather evasive with the questions. As well, she was overall vague about the situation and didn't seem spook the slightest bit. But after even more question dodging, Rose was released. The investigation continued, but when she got back on campus, all of us were thrilled. We were just so worried for her. We had so many questions Questions which Rose didn't seem to want to answer. We understood why, after all, she deserved some much needed time to herself. I tried to ask her some more questions, one on one, when everyone left her apartment, but she seemed to still be acting odd. She avoided every single question, the weirdest way possible. I decided to call it a day and headed back to my room. As I continued my walk home, I couldn't stop thinking about it though. Everything about this whole situation was just so odd. And for Rose to come back like nothing even happened. It just contradicts everything I could even think of. But then it struck me. The ransom, the lack of evidence. Rose's lack of answers. Something deeper was happening, and it involved her. The next morning, I got up and my phone was flooded with notifications. Rose was arrested. According to various news sources and friends, Rose had faked the whole thing for money. Rose wanted to get some quick fame and cash, and somehow thought that doing a fake kidnapping would be the answer. The reason that some of her essential items are missing was because she took them with her. She had left for some sort of peak side hotel. The location was remote enough to avoid suspicion, but not too close for comfort. She stayed there for a few days until the quote unquote ransom was paid off. This explained everything. She was apparently caught after they tracked down all of the traffic cameras, which spotted her car. They managed to find the location she had traveled to and back from. Rose was sued for all the ransom she collected and lost even more than she gained in remaining lawsuits. She was charged with public mischief as well as false reporting. The charge is stacked up to a high-level misdemeanor, and she was sentenced to a year in prison. My jaw was on the floor as I heard all of this. We were all so upset with her. So upset with ourselves. How could we really fall for this? 
How could you do such a thing? I still haven't heard from Rose. But the story is something that I will never forget. To this day, only fans is something I never think of in the same light again. What I'm about to tell you is something that you probably won't even believe happened. Hell, not even in my wildest dreams that I fathom something like this occurring. I can't even put into words how awful my fear and anxiety was that day. Never in my life have I had to actually fear for my safety. But needless to say, I definitely will not be using OnlyFans ever again. This actually happened when OnlyFans was not that known. It was around 2017, which was one year after OnlyFans was founded. I came across a page, which I was rather intrigued by on my Instagram feed. I stumbled across a very cute girl from my hometown. But I never really knew her. This was a time in my life where I was really introverted and rather socially awkward. So I had a lot of people added on my social media who I probably never even talked to. The only reason I even had Facebook and Instagram was to fit in as a college student. For reasons unknown, many very attractive women would always add me back. On Instagram, I initially thought this was due to the fact that we had mutual friends or that I was just a very handsome man. But I eventually learned that following back was just a tactic to get more fame. It wasn't because of my charming looks. Now, I was the kind of guy that would constantly like and comment under many hot girls posts on Instagram. Some would call me a simp. Whenever I got a reply, or like, back from one of these women, I would immediately go to the PayPal or Cash app, in their bio, and leave them a huge tip with the thank you note. For some reason back then, this was my ego booster. I'm not exactly proud of this behavior today, but keep in mind, that I was a rather different person back then. The sad part was my social anxiety prevented me from even deeming those girls. I didn't even try to make small talk with them. As sad as it is, I honestly expected these women to just ask me out and start giving me attention with all these donations I gave them. So, with all of this in mind, you could imagine I was rather thrilled to see a new Lincoln, one of my favorite girls' bios. I immediately opened it and I was pleased with what I saw. The website was called OnlyFans. And now, I could just subscribe and see any girl I want and dress. Without having to constantly pay them. And annoy them in the DMS. Even though I just found out another new money pit. I felt like I'd want one million dollars. So I did what I'd naturally do, and I subscribed. I wanted to believe that I was her first subscriber. And it really did seem like it at first. Initially she seemed a bit shy. She wasn't showing much of her body. And obviously this upset me. I was expecting a lot more for my $15 a month. What she was posting seemed to be things that you could just post on Instagram. There was no nudity whatsoever. No nipples, no nothing. But me being the simp I am, I thought if I somehow just kept the subscription, she noticed me and eventually texted me first. A few months went by, and things seemed relatively normal. She started posting some nude photos. But somehow I wanted to see more. Aside from college, I was working at Starbucks and I put all of my money into donations for her. I somehow felt that she was the one. 
I really thought that we would just go out one day and become lovers but one day I found out that OnlyFans had a new feature now you could DM your OnlyFans model and get more intimate photos all you had to do was make a photo request and they'd send a link with a payment I was delighted now I can get more intimate content more than just nudes so I mustered all the strength I could to text her. And I did. After all, getting some nudes was a good enough excuse to talk. I was shaking like never before. I really didn't know what to expect. But after a few minutes she replied. We eventually started to actually get to know each other. I couldn't believe it. It was actually happening. It started off with her sending a few nude photos for about $100 but then asked me if I'm from the same city as her. After looking at my profile on Instagram with the same username which happened to be my full name unfortunately she realized that she'd come across me a few times in public before. I was sweating and almost gave myself an anxiety attack. I didn't want her to find out who I am. Normally online, I'd give myself a name, like one of my favorite video game characters. But this time, my browser automatically filled in my reel. First and last name and I hit continue. I struggled to think of what to say. My mind was racing. She definitely had some mutual friends with me. And if they find out what I did online, they mock me endlessly at college. For some time, I tried to think of a way to escape the situation or leave the conversation, but I couldn't quite figure out anything. So I just answered with yes. From then on, we both got involved in an actual conversation. It turns out, that she actually recognized me from college. She had seen me in person various times. And it turns out that one of her friends actually lives on the campus. We seem to have a lot in common. And we even realized that we were in the same place. At the same time, many times, we just never noticed each other. I was amazed, never in my life. Did I think that I could have such a long and enduring conversation with someone, especially on OnlyFans? At this point, I was less interested in asking her for nudes and more interested in asking her how her day went or how she was doing. It was almost like I finally had a genuine relationship with a girl for the first time in my life. I soon realized that money wasn't the way to win a girl. And the irony was, she was spending way more time with me now than when I was spending money on her. But one day she told me that I'm so nice that she wants to switch over to Instagram. She even let me know that I can call her and gave me her number. I was blown away. She really wanted to step up our relationship. I could finally get myself a real girlfriend. To be honest, I didn't even believe that this was possible. I genuinely thought I was just gonna be single and behind a computer my whole life. Who knew I'd find my first girlfriend on OnlyFans? Things just kept getting better from then on. We were texting on Instagram for a while and I decided to actually call her. It was almost like I could feel a real connection with this woman. That was probably the first time I could call someone without getting a straight up panic attack. When we talked on the phone, it felt like we had the same personality. We were identical in so many ways. Her voice was just so pleasant and comforting. And we talked for hours during the next few days. I really thought that she would be the one. 
for the first time ever, I didn't want to wait any longer. I wanted to meet her in person as soon as possible. She was happy with the news, and eventually invited me over her house. We agreed in a proper date and time, and hung up the phone. I felt like I was on top of the world. After years of criticizing myself, and feeling like I wasn't good enough, I finally got one. I always thought that I needed to be like, one of those Instagram fuckboys, but it turns out that casual. Nice guys like me do get a chance. The day of the date came, and I dressed myself up in my best clothes, and went to a barber. I was so eager to meet her. I instantly booked an Uber, and he took me to her neighborhood. When I was approaching her house, however, I noticed an awkward man standing behind a tree. He seemed really sketchy and had a hood on. I couldn't even see his face or eyes. Normally this would alarm me, but I was just so eager to go on a date with her that I shrugged it off. She opened the door and she was just as gorgeous as you was online. Even prettier than I expected in person. She put her shoes on and we went for a walk. In the beginning it was a little awkward, but I eventually got over the moments of dead silence and started an actual conversation with her. She seemed a bit nervous too, but once we got the ball rolling, everything went well. We had a really good conversation and didn't stop talking till the end of the date. I eventually walked her home and we waved goodbye. But as I was leaving, when I turned my head around to see what was happening, I noticed the same exact weird guy from before. He was awkwardly approaching me at first, trying hard to hide it by looking around or avoiding eye contact. But eventually, he was around 10 feet away and there was no hiding this time. Hey you. The man asked. Um, yeah. I replied, stop. Get over here. I stopped walking and turned around. Then he said, Who are you to her? Who am I to her? What kind of question was that? As I was trying to think of an answer, I look back up at the man and notice that he was getting seemly enraged. He had this crazed look in his eyes, like he was about to hurt me or something. You trying to hit on my girlfriend? Boy, you crossed a line, the man said. What? I'm sorry. I think you're mistaking me for someone else. I really don't know what to say. I replied nervously. I started slowly, backing away. With my arm pushed out in front of me, just for protection, I looked down at his hands. And he had them both inside his hoodie, front pocket. I saw his facial expression change from enraged, to even more furious. He started breathing heavily, and clenched his teeth in anger. You shouldn't have come here. The man said. He then pulled out a gun from his front pocket and started firing it at me. I just fell on the sidewalk. I was in so much shock that I couldn't even feel any pain or take a breath. I just stared at him bluntly and treadling, pumping through every ounce of my body. He then looked around and took off. After a few seconds, I laddered a big delayed scream. The adrenaline subsided, and I felt like the worst pain in my life. I glanced around, and I saw two big holes in the front of my knees. He shot me through both of my legs. I curled up in pain and started to black out. I was slowly drifting away. 
at a completely lost consciousness. I woke up in the hospital, still in disbelief of what happened. My mom was sitting on a chair next to my bed asleep. She woke up quickly with a big smile and tears on her face. She explained to me what happened. One of the neighbors heard the gunshots and then spotted me in a puddle of blood. The guy that shot me had been taken into custody. A few hours later I had a few operations. But she told me that I would eventually walk. After a long amount of time. I was devastated. I cried a lot that day. I asked myself why this could even happen. Why me? I could still feel the stabbing pain in my legs. It was unbearable. I couldn't sleep for the next few days. I could still feel the holes inside my knees. The bullets going into my leg. It was the worst pain of my life. I could barely move that same day. I got a text from the girl I went on a date with. And it explained everything. The man was a subscriber to her, only fans like me. He also liked her and followed her on all social media. The only difference was, the man was severely mentally ill. And he genuinely believed that she was his girlfriend. He often stalked her around town. And somehow managed to track down our house. She was hiding there daily behind the trees and bushes. Making sure no one else would come to her house. She didn't even know this until the cops spread out the neighbor's security camera footage. He really believed in some sort of imaginary relationship. And really thought that she was cheating on him by going out with me. After a few months, my health got a bit better. And I gained my knee strength a bit back. According to the doctors, my legs would never be the same. The medic said that the human body rarely recovers completely from gunshot wounds and that I probably would never be able to run or be able to do any heavy activity on my legs. For the rest of my life, I lost contact with the girl shortly after that. There was too many emotions tied with her and there was no way I'm letting something like this happen again. To me, she didn't seem to want to delete her OnlyFans account either, so both of us went our separate ways. I still don't know what happened to that man who shot me. Part of me feels bad for him in his condition, but the other half of me wants him to spend years in prison. I will never forgive him for the permanent damage to my legs. And that was the last time I ever went on, only fans.